We doing mad today Ain't got time for no games We doing mad today All work and no play We doing mad today Guys, Mr. Ng here. Let's go over lesson 4.3 Two-way tables and Venn diagrams What's our learning targets? After this lesson, you should be able to Use a two-way table to find uh, probabilities um, Learning target number two Calculate probabilities with the general addition rule and uh, learning target number three, use Venn diagram to find probabilities. All right, learning target number one. Uh, we talked about it before. The M, uh, E, the mutually exclusive. Uh, events A and B cannot both happen at the same time. For such events, A or B means that only event A happens or event B happens. Remember my um, my story was that you mutually agree not to include each other. You mutually agree to exclude each other. So for example, um, so sad you guys can't, but yes and no to prom. It's either yes you're going to prom or no they're not. These are mutually exclusive events. They will not happen at the same time, right? Okay, number two, you can find the probability of A or B with the addition rule for mutual exclusive events. Um, that is a probability of A or B. And before, what we did was um, the word or meant plus. So the probability of event A happening plus the probability of event B happening. Now, how can we find probability of A or B when two events are not mutually exclusive? Now we have to deal with the fact that A or B means one or the other. Or both. When you're trying to find probabilities involving two events, like probability of A uh, or B, a two-way table, two-way table, can display the sample space in a way that makes probability calculations easier. All right, let's try our first example here. Happy, healthy, rich, or famous. We kind of did this in a previous example. One question on the census at school survey asked students if they would prefer to be happy, healthy, rich, or famous. Students may only choose one of these responses. The two-way table summarizes the responses of 218 high school students from the United States by gender. Suppose we choose a student at random from these 218 students. Define A as getting a female student and B getting a student who prefers to be happy. Okay, first example. Um, what is the probability of B? So the probability of event B you can summarize it also as doing something like probability of a student who is uh, happy. And if I look at the row, happy, I'm going to use my light blue color, make sure, and I kind of want that. Someone who is happy, remember probability is the events of it happening. Uh, over the total. Okay, the total amount of people is 218. So this would be 218, and how many people are happy? Now, here I can disregard female or male, I just want the total, which is 136. If you if you um, do a decimal and then multiply by 100, you'll get 62.4%. There is a 62.4% chance that you will get someone who is happy, okay? Let's write that there. 
is a 62% chance that a randomly selected student from these 218 students prefer to be what? Happy. All right, let's do this next one. This one wants someone who is female and they are happy. Okay, so let's do a different color. Let's choose orange. I'm gonna highlight the row of females. Okay, and in this row, I'm looking for a female that is happy. That would be uh, 90. So the probability is a female and happy over uh, the total. So this would be uh, 90 over the total, which is 218. And that will give you uh, 0.413 or 41.3% box answers. Okay, let's try this next one. What's the, find the probability of A or B. Okay. This is the probability of that they are A, which is female, or the probability that they are event B, which is um, happy. Okay, so let's go ahead and just add all of those that are female. That would be 90, let's, 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 let's try that again, start over. Erase everything. Okay, probability that they're female is all of these numbers here. So I have ninety plus twenty plus ten plus zero. And I'm going to also um, find the probability that they are happy. I want to use a different color. So that would be this direction. Okay. Now pay attention. I already used 90, right? Because basically the female um, that is happy and female is in two categories. They're in the happy category and the female category. So again, I've already used that 90. So now I'm just going to write the 46. And this is all over the total of 218. So if you divide this, this would give me 166 over 218. And this would give me a 0 0.303, which is 30.3%. Okay. And that is my answer. Let's try uh, learning target number two. All right, and learning target number two here. Um, I have this problem here. There is a problem with gender and pierced ears. Okay, so we talked about that double dipping. Okay, so if I did uh, the probability that someone is uh, male Um, the probability that someone is male 
uh, would be uh, 90 out of 178. And then the uh, probability, is if they have a pierced ear, that would be a total of 103 plus 178. Now here's my dilemma. What happens if you won um, the probability of both A and B? Uh, you can try to do something like this. So the 90 plus the 103 would give you 193 over 178. And this is, um, I don't know, get my calculator really quickly. 193 divided by 178, that's 1.08. But here's a question. Can we do this? Well, the answer is no. Why? Because this number is 108%. And in probability, you can't go over 100% or over 1. So this is clearly wrong because the probability is bigger than 1. We can't use the addition rule for mutually exclusive events unless events A and B have no uh, outcomes in common. But this one did have something in common. That was the male and has pierced ears. That was, um, in some ways, double counted, we call it. If, in this example, there were 19 outcomes that were shared by events A and B, the students who are male and have a pierced ear. And again, this is clearly wrong. Okay, So, how do we fix this? We can fix the double counting problem illustrated in the two-way table by subtracting the probability that they are both male and have a pierced ear from the sum. This re result is known as the general addition rule. The general addition rule for two events, if A and B are any two events resulting from some chance process, the general addition rule says that probability of A or B is probability of A plus the probability of B, and then you have to subtract the, the probability of A and B. Okay, again, this is for not mutually exclusive. Try this example and hopefully this will make sense. Cell phone or landline. In one large city, 92% of uh, residents have a cell phone, and 64% have a landline, and 59% have both. What's the probability that a randomly selected resident has a cell phone or a landline? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to define my variables here. I'm going to say C is a cell phone. Okay, all of that is C. So if I wanted something like this, the probability of C, well, we said it is what? 0.92. Okay, um, if they have a landline, I'm going to call that L. So the probability that someone has a landline is 0.64. But what would happen if you added those two numbers together? You would get 1.56, which is over 100%. So here we have to subtract when they have both. So both here, this is really the, um, we have to subtract, because now we're applying the general addition rule is probability that it is C and L. So meaning they have both, so we would have to subtract 0.59. When you subtract those, you get an answer of 0.97. There is a 97% probability 
that a randomly selected resident, I'm just rewriting that, has a cell phone or a landline. Learning target number three, <coughs> we're going to talk about, think about this, what happens if we use the general addition rule for the mutually exclusive events A and B? In that case, probability of A and B is equal to zero. Remember, mutually exclusive events is kind of like, uh, do you ha want to do anything with your, your ex, your ex-girlfriend, your boyfriend? Probably not, so there's no interaction between you guys, there's no intersection. And the formula reduces, so if it was like probability of A plus probability of B, that's a B, sorry, ugly B, and then minus the probability of A and B. <coughs> and then if we're saying that this is equal to zero, you don't need to write that, you're just left with the probability of A and B. In other words, the addition rule for mutual exclusive events is just a special case for the general addition rule. Number two, a <coughs> Venn diagram consists of one or more circles surrounded by a rectangle. Um, each circle represents an event, as you can see over here in this example, right? Each circle is an event, event A and B. And the region inside the rectangle represents a sample space of the chance process. A typical Venn diagram that shows a sample space and relationship between uh, events A and B. So that is right here. Okay. So this is a Venn diagram. Okay. So a review of some things that we have talked about before. <coughs> um, the complement of event A contains outcome that are not in A. So let's just say I want event A or probability of event A happening plus the probability of of not A equals 1 and remember uh, so that's kinda like the black circle and the pink then if you wanted to find the complement, you would just subtract A, this is what we learned previously, and you would get something like this. The probability of not A, or the complement, equals 1 minus the probability of A happening. Okay. <clears throat> um, this next one over here. The event A and B is called the intersection of events A and B. It consists of all outcomes that are both to both events. That should have been a fill in the blank. It will be when you this, watch this video. So the intersection is, again, in this space right there. What is the notation? So I'm going to write, um, let's write this one. I'm going to write out the word enter. because the symbols for this are the intersection of A and B. That is the notation. Okay. Um, the event A or B is called the union of events A and B. It consists of all outcomes that are an event A or B. So the notation for this one is A um, or B. And my little trick for this one is, well, U for union, and here's my other trick, or you make a kind of like an O for or. Okay, so those are my two tricks. <coughs> With this new notation, we can rewrite the general addition um, in symbols. And we can do this as the probability 
of A union B equals the probability of A plus B <coughs> and then subtracting the probability of their intersections. Okay, let's go on the page four here. <coughs> Body art. In the previous examples, our events of interest for A was a male and B has a pierced ear. Here is a two way table that summarizes this data. Uh, if you notice a couple of things, <coughs> they're just adding across here. So 19 plus 84 gives you 103. And then going in this direction, 71 plus 80, 71 plus 4 gives you 75. And if you add down, 19 plus 71 gives you 90. And then over here as well, 84 plus 4 gives you 88. You add across, those give you 178. <clears throat> Adding down gives you 178. Okay. All right, let's do this example over here. Let's draw a Venn diagram. Okay, event A, <coughs> I'm going to say is orange, is this one. So this is male. And the B is this circle over here. This is B pierced ear. And this is event A happening. <coughs> okay. So in the region in the Venn diagram, Let's say you want both a male <clears throat> and a pierced ear. A male and a pierced ear is the intersection of the two circles. That would be this pink region right there. Okay, and how many are both male from the two-way table? So this is a two-way table. And what's both male and pierced ears? That would be 19. So this number uh, in there is 19 people. Okay? Let's go on to the next one. Male, so the whole orange circle and no pierced uh, ears. So, let's, well, sorry, let's go back to the last one. This one is male and uh, PE, pierced ear. So, the pink is kind of like, I call it like, yes, pierced ear. So this outside would be um, no would be male and no pierced ear, this region. And this one, so look on your two-way table, locate males, and a no would be 71. So this would be 71. So if you think about your two numbers, 71 plus 19 give you the 90 males. Okay. Go on to the next one. So that one is um, where is the location of the orange that is inside circle A? Oops, do orange. And then outside of circle B. Right, this this region all around here. 
Okay. All right, let's do the next one. Let's try doing a different color. All right, female and pierced ear. So females, if I want you to think about this, um, female, so here's a column I'm looking at, and pierced, um, sorry, and pierced ear would be 84. So this region over here is going to be our female, and yes, pierced ears. How many people are female and have pierced ears? 84. Last one I forgot to write. This was 71. Okay, so in green, where is the location of this? Um, we can say inside inside circle what? B and outside of circle A. It would basically just be this area, right? Okay, and my last one. Um, female and no pierced ear. Female and no pierced ear. Okay. Okay, the the orange circle represents males, okay? So if you're not male, then outside the orange circle, you would be uh, a female. So out here would be female. And of course the blue circle, inside the blue circle represents pierced ear. So then this would represent no pierced ear. So this in here would represent four people. Where is this location? They are outside both circles. Okay, so hopefully the Venn diagram gives you a visual of how to kind of see the problem. Let's try 3D. Who has pets? In one large city, 40% of households own a dog, 32% own a cat, and 18% own both. Suppose we randomly select a household and record which type of pet is owned by the household. Make a Venn diagram to display the sample space of this process using the events D owns a dog and C for cats. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sample space. So this big old rectangle is our sample space. All right, next, I'm going to have D for dog, and I'm going to use this light blue. And this represents D owns dog. And let's use pink. OK, this one is. C owns cat. Okay, now I'm going to work backwards. Let me say it again. I'm going to work backwards. Okay, try to use a highlighter. 18% is both. This is my intersection, both. And what number goes in there? Well, 18%. Okay, so now think of the, the, the purple pink circle, okay? So I don't know if I can do this. That intersection plus this part of the whole circle equals the whole circle. I don't know if that makes sense. If I can take, let's say, magic, okay guys? Take this piece and drag it over here. That's my full circle. You like it? <laughs> Close. Okay, that's the big idea. Okay, so that intersection is already 0.18. And 18, um, sorry, 
This is cats. So 32% uh, own a cat. Okay, here's the question. How much is that weird part? This part over here. Does that make sense? Well, use your algebra skills. You could just subtract 0 0.18. 0 0.18, come on. And you're going to get that crazy looking shape. It's like a variable. Think of a variable. Equals point, uh, 14. So I'm going to write in here point 14. Okay. Let's try that for dogs. I have all of the dogs is equal to this region. That was not a good drawing. Plus that little sliver inside. And so if I know that the whole circle is equal to uh, everyone that owns dogs is uh, 40. And I know that both of them is 0.18. So this region that I'm trying to find, uh, if I subtract 0.18 from both of these, I will get uh, 22. That moon over there is representing 22%. Okay, there's one other sample space that I'm missing. If I get 22 plus 18 plus 14, and basically what happens if someone doesn't own a pet, so no pet. I'm going to put plus no pet. All of this should equal 100%. Are you following me? So dog plus both plus um, cat plus no pet equals 1. Are you following? And if I add all that up, you'll get um, uh, that will be uh, 54. And if you subtract 54 from both sides, you will get 46. Okay, what did I find here? I'm basically saying that there is a 46% chance that you don't own a cat, dog, or both. Okay, so remember all those numbers add up to 1, the sample space. Okay? All right, find the probability that the resident owns a dog. Let's change colors here. Okay, so probability um, probability that the person owns a dog and no cat. And it says not cat, I say no cat. All right. So basically, you just basically want to have, this is the same thing as probability of only a dog, only dog. Um, and how did I do that? Well, it's essentially the probability that, I already have it on the answer on there, but I'm trying to show you to another way, owns dog using the um, the general addition rule. So there's repeats, right? Repeats is the intersection. So you have to subtract. It probably owns both. So probability that you own a dog is total of 0.40 minus probability of both with the intersection, which is 0.18. And then you get that number that we already found out, kind of um, my way of showing it, is 0.22. So the probability that it owns a dog and 
Now the count is 22%, okay? Go ahead and try question number four, and then go ahead and press play when you want to see uh, the answers. Number four, <clears throat> review it all. Who owns a home? What is the relationship between educational achievement and home ownership? A random sample of 500 U.S. adults were selected. Each member of the sample was identified as a high school graduate and as a homeowner or not. The two-way table displays the data. So what I did is I went ahead and added 221 plus 119. It gives me the green 340. Going across the nose, 80, um, not a homeowner, 89 plus 71 gives me the 160 in blue. And then high school graduate, yes, going down, 221 plus 89 gives me 310. So I just got, I got all the totals. High school graduate knows 119 plus 71 gives me 190. And if you add the lime blue equals the orange 500 or the pink plus light blue gives you also 500. <clears throat> Suppose we chose a member of the sample at random to find G, events G is the high school graduate and H is the homeowner. Explain why P Probability of G or H is not equal to the probability of G plus the probability of H, then find the probability of G or H. The probability of G or H doesn't equal P. Sorry, I'm going to annotate. <coughs> does not equal P plus G because the events of high school graduate and homeowner are not mutually exclusive. Remember, um, not a mutually exclusive means you can't happen at the same time, okay? It can't be both um, yes, no, and going to prom at the same time. It's either one or the other, okay? Um, but not mutually exclusive in orange there with the two stars. It can happen at the same time. Like, say you want to go to prom and you want to go to graduation, okay? Graduation and prom can happen exactly at the same time or they don't have to. Um, so we did this one. These events can happen at the same time and in fact there are 221 outcomes there in blue. I'm oh, sorry, blue. <laughs> that's a red. That's right there. 221 I circled it in red. Outcomes that are shared by the events G and H. If we add the probability of G and H we would double count the 221 outcomes. Let's go ahead and do this together. That's why I decided to record now. So if I do the probability of G or H, my formula is going to be the probability of G plus the probability of H. And then we also need to subtract the intersection because you are double counting them. G and H. Okay, so the probability of G high school graduate, yes, would be um, 310, right there, 310 over the total of 500. And the probability of H, a homeowner, would be in green, this direction. So that would be um, 340. Now remember, if you just simply added the numerators, that's what you do in fractions, you would get 650. And if you did 650 over 500, that would be a probability over 1. And that would be wrong. So your, your senses should kind of come into play. Does that make sense? They're like, oh, this is wrong. Okay, so then you're going to subtract both probability of a G, so yes, a graduate and yes a homeowner which is 221 and if you do that you will get um, 429 over 500 um, put that in my calculator I should have just doubled it in my head um, 0.858, and that would be 85.8%, okay? There is an 85.8% chance that the uh, person you are getting is both a high school graduate and a homeowner. 
Okay, make a Venn diagram to display the sample space of the chances. So here is all of my sample space, everything that can happen. And um, homeowners, we already did in green, so I'm going to choose green. I'm locating up here in my table. Okay, now I'm also going to um, um, I'm also going to uh, separate it. So, so if you think about this, this is the homeowner, and there you have one nineteen. And then you also have the red section, this red section is 221, that is both graduate and homeowner. And I'm just going to write in there both. And then this one over here, this blue one is a high school graduate. Oh no, what color did we use? Dang it, we did pink. Okay, so this is a high school grad, and that's 221 plus 89. Okay, here's a question. <clears throat> How many people are not or no high school graduate and no not homeowner? So no high school and no graduate. Okay, look on your two-way table and that would be uh, 71. So 71 is out here. Let's just check the numbers. So you have 119 plus 221 plus 89 plus 71, that should equal the 500. Okay, 4C, write the event is not a high school graduate. So no um, high school, uh, that was a G, sorry. No G, but yes, a homeowner. How do you write that in the symbolic form or the notation form that we had in that table above? Okay, so um, another way of saying no G or not G is the complement. So we would write something like this, probability of of um, not a graduate um, and and um, yes H which would just be a homeowner so your notation might look something like that, which we're going to get to more complicated ones uh, later on, okay? All right, two-way tables. To find probability, yes. Calculate probabilities with general addition rule, yes. Probability A plus B, and then you can't double count it, so you have to subtract it because the um, probability is only equal one. And then use a Venn diagram to find the probabilities um, remember, you can do the part of the circle plus the whole of the circle equals the whole circle. And that is uh, Lesson 4.3, Two-Way Tables and Venn Diagrams. We'll see you guys. Bye. We doing math today. Ain't got time for no games. We doing math today. All work and no play. We doing math today.
We doing mad today. Ain't got time for no games. We doing mad today. All work and no play. We doing mad today. Listen up and behave. We doing mad today. We doing math today.